we kind of already talked about this. Um, so Kinsey, you could still pop us off, but what's y'all's relationship with setting goals, planning, and peering into the future, like predicting events? I have a lot of thoughts on this, <laughs> especially because I am a three and I'm very goal oriented and I, I am a fairly structured person. So I like to say I enjoy spontaneity provided it's carefully planned. Like I can be spontaneous, but I need to know when I'm going to be back and when I'm going to go so that I know what my obligations for everyone is in between. I don't mind being spontaneous whatsoever, as long as I know I can fulfill all of my other obligations that I've already promised to other people, because people are counting on me to get stuff done. Um, but as far as like predicting events and, and planning, I've really come to think that people overvalue what you can do in a year and plan too far to what you can do in 10 years. But I find like, that five-year mark is really, really undervalued. Like there's so much that can happen in a five-year span that you can get a bigger vision on. But 10 years, like I love to theorize about it, but realistically, I thought I was going to be a dog trainer. I became a dog trainer. If I had kept going based on my plan, I would still be a dog trainer and I would be miserable. You know, there's so many things that can happen in that big of a span of time. But within like that five year mark, that's kind of where I find the sweet spot to be. I, I remember um, when I was getting to know my husband, who is a is a double feminine ISTP, which is why I love ISTPs. So <laughs> guilty there. <laughs> um, I met him when I was 15 and I had a very specific vision of who I wanted in a guy because I wanted someone that I could grow a family with that would support me, that would be open to my religious beliefs. Like I had kind of a list. And even as a 15 year old, I wasn't messing around because I knew what I wanted to achieve what I needed. And within five years of marrying, of, of meeting him, we were married. So started like, I didn't know in five years that was gonna happen, but my, my thought process was, I don't wanna waste my time. I want to, be intentional with what I'm going to do. Um, but on a smaller scale, like on a on a day to day scale, and this is the, the, the big difference between like my husband and myself, I love that he can chill. Like ISTPs are so good at just being able to not stress. If you ask my husband, then, like <laughs> one of my biggest weaknesses is I'm a chronic stressor. Like I'm a planner. I need to get things done for myself and for other people. But when we were when we were pouring the pad for our, our foundation, it was getting close. It was in the fall, close to this last winter um, up in northern Idaho. So it gets really cold here. And I had already planned based on the weather, like the, the people were coming to pour it the next week because I knew if it didn't get done in time, it was going to freeze. But by the time it got that close to the end, like he didn't stress about it at all until the very end. And he's like, oh. This is never going to get done. We're going to have to pay way more for it to not freeze. It's never going to happen. Are the finances there? I'm like, I thought about all of this like a month ago. They're coming next week. It's it's like it's already taken care of. So I stressed that amount of time, right? But then it was done. Be and so that's kind of like smaller scale looking into future events, I guess, and planning. Like I'd already planned for the what ifs and the idea that the temperature is likely going to get colder. So this is going to need to be done where he could chill until the very end. And then he got like super stressed, but it was already taken care of. So that's why we make such a good team is because it's, it's about that balance, right? So anyways, again, very long winded, but um, the big takeaway I think is like, we overestimate what we can do in a year. I think that's why a lot of us fail New Year's resolutions is because we want to do it all. And that's not realistic to change so fast, but then undervalue what we can do in five. And I think that five-year mark is really where that sweet spot is. Um, so yeah, I'll pass it over to Jessica. Mm, okay, so I was thinking more about the long-term goals, I think. Um... Because with short-term planning, I'm more like just taking a list of things I have to do. And then just, I'm I'm not like a uh, SI type of planner, of course. And so <laughs> I'm just taking like a, a general list of things I have to do and then just try to uh, manage. 
but when it comes to like setting um, goals and like long-term planning I think I just constantly like reevaluate what my goal is it don't doesn't change a lot nowadays it's changed throughout my life but now it's more constant and I try to just like move towards it and whenever I see like a occasion to throw another stepping stone I just do it so um yeah I kind of go to the light I don't know like I see the light in the end of the tunnel and to this light I'm going to <laughs> I resonate with that so <laughs> seriously it's like okay I just I just see where I want to be at yeah. and then my intuition is just kind yeah. of like guiding me there eventually like every action that I'm making in life it's like, okay, is this a detour or is this going to get me closer to that yeah. light over there? I don't know how I'm going to get there, but if I focus all of my mind on that light, eventually I'm going to be there. And then by the time I'm there, there's another light that I'm like shooting for. But yeah, yeah that, that's cool. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So then I just like try to find all the stepping stones that I need to throw and then just like go towards it. And yeah, and the light, it's not like, it's not like something very um, defined. It's more like a general idea of what I want to do in life, I think. And then I just try to adjust. All right. Well, so I'm demon and I in OP terms. So planning is not exactly my forte. Um, but I, I guess what I'll say about planning is that and how my growth path for that is often sort of like looking back at my life and seeing like the patterns of myself and learning to trust that those things are going to continue to keep happening. Like I'm going to continue to flub up my plans in the same sorts of ways and not be so optimistic that the way I set out for this plan to go is it's going to go exactly like that because I'm, I'm a human, not a robot kind of a thing. Um, so I definitely see that as something that I'm learning in terms of planning just in general, uh, like say I have something at work that I'm trying need to accomplish. I'll think like, oh, well, I just like write this code and then I push it up and it's done. But there's like usually back and forth, refining requirements, all that kind of stuff takes like work in trying to track down like who's the person that can actually tell me what I need to code, right? So there, there's usually questions that come up and like allowing the, the space into my plan to accept that those things are going to go wrong is the kind of st stuff I think about. So Kinsey's over here talking about five years. I'm, I'm thinking about like two weeks because that's how <laughs> my, uh, my sprint planning works at my developer job. So um, that that's something I'm I'm like constantly iterating on and trying to get better at and not be so hard on myself about as well because I I can often screw that up and just be overly optimistic or otherwise. So I guess the other thing with planning is having getting too many again with the optimistic side of myself. I uh, might overly invest. Um, it seems like Kinsey's a little bit better about managing multiple commitments and making sure that you leave one and go to the next. That's something I'm definitely struggling with. So um, I don't know what, I'm, what my point is for that, but that's definitely something I'm like seeing and, and like trying to manage for myself as well. So maybe I'll reach out to her for advice. <laughs> yeah, I suck at planning. I don't, I don't, I suck. Like I, I'm just, that's not how I'm, I'm built. Um, that uh, that that color and shape analogy you made earlier, Kenzie, is brilliant because uh, I, I we might both be squares, but I'm definitely like a, a chartreuse, and you're like a, a hardcore aquamarine. Like I don't like I, I for me it's it's very difficult for me to uh, to to confine myself to a schedule or to a plan. It feels painful. It feels like a constraint. Um, my uh my boss up here uh he he's uh an engineer turned pastor uh and is very methodical very type a uh 
very structured and systematic with everything that he does. And sometimes like planning an event with him, because we're both, uh, he's, he's a good friend of mine too. And we're both very creative, both very outgoing, but sometimes planning an idea with him is like, I want to jump off a cliff because it's like, I'm thinking, okay, how can we get an explosion? Right? Like how can we get grenades to fall from the sky? And he's like, okay, but the velocity of the grenades need to fall in a specific angle. And I'm like, oh man, this is like, it's not fun anymore. At this one, it's not fun. Um, and so I've, I've, had to I've had to train myself and I've grown quite a bit, um, uh, like teaching myself to um, sort of constrain myself in the beginning to give myself the freedom later on. So like, for instance, uh, one of the things that I was trying to do when I first started working with him was in my calendar, uh, like putting every little detail that I needed to do um, for all of the things that I needed to get done. And he looked at my calendar one week and he was like, uh, hey, why don't you try doing this instead? So he actually had me block out spaces in my day for me to do whatever. Like, like I have like an hour in my day every day to be creative. Or I have an hour in my day to just call somebody that I just want to hang out with or to write some music or to work on a new graphic or whatever, whatever. And it's sort of that planned spontaneity that you were talking about earlier. Uh, and like I found a lot of freedom in that, not as much as I would like, because it's still like it takes energy for me to do that. Um, but that's like that's sort of been helpful um, as far as the, the structuring of everything, um, as far as like planning and, and uh, or future goal orientation. I, I tend to be less concerned about the person I want to be uh, as opposed to like the impact I want to have. And so it's a lot less attractive for me to like come up with a step, uh, a 10 step or five year process to, um, you know, get to a place in life that I'd like to, that I'd like to be at, as opposed to meander through life, experiencing all of the possible things that I possibly can, and then picking the individual fruits uh, out, of, out of the myriad of experiences and saying, oh, this is awesome. I'll be able to use this, kind of tuck it away for later, and then just discard the rest. Um, I, uh, I'm a Christian. I don't know if you guys are religious at all, but like, it's very common. What's up? Uh, I, I, it's very common for, for Christians and people that grow up in, in church, uh, to pray to God and ask him to open doors. I find that's a really bad prayer for me. So one of my mottos is I don't pray for him to open doors. I pray that he slams them in my face and the doors that are left open, I'm going to run through because not only is that natural for me, that's like an inclination, but I find that when I run through the doors that I believe he's open, good things happen. And when he slams them in my face, I have no choice but to <laughs> abort, abort mission and uh, uh, kind of head towards the light, like you were saying, Jess. Um, so yeah, I'm not great at, at planning. I'm not great at being goal-oriented. But I also feel like it's worked out pretty well for me. Um, and so now I'm working with somebody who is a planner and is very goal oriented. And I'm trying it out. I'm, I'm just trying it out, seeing what happens. I'll let you know in five years. Um, so for me, um, I'm really good at um, like planning. Like I literally write in my journal. I like writing. So I literally just um, just plan stuff out so I could like have a good like outline and stuff and then I start implementing um those steps to accomplish my goals um yeah so like I like to have a schedule like I can't do like spontaneity well spontaneous things well kind of a little bit but um I tend to overthink a lot so I try to introspect a lot and just have a like a calendar or just write the things that I need to do like I, I like to have control basically. <laughs> I feel like if I don't have control, like if there's anything I don't like is ambiguity. Like, yeah, I can't, I can't deal with that. I need to know what's gonna happen. <laughs> so those are my thoughts. Um, I, I'm really good at planning stuff out. But, that is um, really interesting, Vicky, because uh -huh. I plan, 
but uh-huh. I keep most of my plans in my head and then I juggle them around based on what the expectations are. Uh-huh. I've done like a like a actual planner before, but I'm not great at writing things out unless it's something I'm struggling with. Like, okay, uh-huh. I need to work out tomorrow morning. Let's schedule my workout. For the most part, I've I keep it up here. So that's another really interesting color, especially between you and Cam, like Cam mm-hmm. being a seven. That was a really great difference between the two. Um, but I, yeah. Uh, yeah, I just thought that was a really interesting take because it's that it is really structured and yeah. um, something that I aspire to do more because I think that that could be helpful. But yeah, very interesting. Yeah, like for me, like there's just that. certain things that like um, I need to write down and some others don't. Like you said, like I have a vision already in my head and I could implement that vision already. But it's just some things that I don't. And I like I tend to overthink. So I also need to write down. Like, like I said, I really struggle with ambiguity. Like I like to know like certain things, certain outcomes. Like I literally play out, play out multiple scenarios and how these scenarios will foreplay in the future and how like things will be affected based on if I change this or I change that, how these things or certain people will be affected based on this certain out, like vision that I have. Vicky, that's so wild. Cause like <laughs> I, like honestly, the ambiguity is the fun. Yeah, <laughs> like it's and so I I guess I really don't understand uh, what it means to be an ENFJ. I think because I I <laughs> I honestly in my head I'm thinking an ENFJ because of the people that I've met are just are are they're fine with going with the flow. Like that's that's how I think about an ENFJ. Like somebody who's um, interested enough to be uh, objective enough in a situation to read to read somebody up and down and be empathetic enough to figure them out. And kind of go with the flow. That's a very, uh, you know, I'm an idiot. Remember that. But like, that's what I think of when I think of them in EMFJ. And obviously, that's untrue. Did yeah, that? It's definitely and, not true. We don't always have everything together. You know, at least I don't. Oh, <laughs> trust me, I, I don't have nothing together. But I'm saying like, <laughs> I, I'm saying just the simple fact that you have an outline and that you play out every scenario in your head. That's foreign to me. Like it's very foreign mm-hmm. for me to play out every scenario in my head. I'll jump head first into into the pool and hope oh, I don't no, break my neck. I but that's that. but that's part, that's part of the fun, right? Like it's just cool that we're different. I, I was gonna I ask think- real quickly, Vicky, what was your enneagram again? Um, I'm a two W three. Got you. And then with Cam, I was gonna ask Kinsey. Don't forget what you were gonna say. I won't. <laughs> um, did you did you see like how did I guess? from an external perspective, because we were always in the same group. Mm -hmm. So your perception of ENFJ, did you see me in that way? Like, did I seem more of like a planner or glow with the flow or? You know, now that I think about it, you were, uh, I wouldn't have called you a planner, but you were definitely like, um, um, oh, what's that? What's that show? Jordan Peele had a show that just got canceled on HBO. I can't think of the name of it. Uh, whatever it's it was a it was a it was a horror show uh, a horror like series just got canceled regardless at the end of it um there's this scene where like they go they go into this weird world and they're this person who's called i think the timekeeper it's been a while since i watched it and basically their whole existence is seeing every uh every path that takes um and then they relay that information as they see fit um to to i'm sorry that's not jordan peterson's show that's um Loki, Loki from, uh, from uh, whatever. Uh, but like he meets the guy who sees everything and it's always happening and it's always being updated and he's always aware of it. That's more how I thought of you, but not in the sense of planning for like the avoidance of something to happen, but it, near for the simple exercise of it. Like the exercise of trying to figure out what was going to happen next, which yeah. I think is slightly different. It wasn't to prepare necessarily for like a uh, catastrophe but it was just the simple exercise of figuring out what a person is thinking, why they're thinking it, and what outcomes would happen because of it. That's actually spot on. Yeah, because yeah, I see myself as kind of like a Doctor Strange from the Marvel movies, where it's just like, I believe him to be an ENTJ, so he would have an eye in the same position. It's like, I'm seeing all of the possibilities of where things can go. And then I bring in like the Raymond Reddington, (laughs) where it's like, okay, I think that's the path that I most want things to go and I'll influence it in a way. Like my thing is I want to influence things to go the way that I have it in my head, 
without it seeming like I did that. Um, so for me, the planning and all that comes like very socially. So when I'm thinking like long term, like, okay, this is what I want to do. And this is my career and yada, yada, yada. That's not as much of what I'm thinking in that sense. I, I kind of, like I said, I'm, I'm just going toward the light. Like, okay, I want to be this. So I'm going to aim that way. But when it comes to like social strategy and like, okay, these are the results that I want. And these are the dominoes that I have to set up and then knock over at this time. And this is when I should do that. Oh, let me tell Cam this. He's most likely going to tell this person that in this moment. And then like, so yeah, that's kind of how it's going to go. It's like, oh, if I see something happening, then it's like, oh, got to speed up um, to see where what's going to happen like 20 minutes or three hours from now, maybe even two days to a week from now. And then I have to like figure out what I'm going to do in between to kind of play my part in that role. Um, but yeah, I think that also what you were talking about was Lovecraft Country. That's it. That's the yeah. one. And it was because there was the same guy who actually was, if anybody's watching, um, it was an INTJ uh, main character. I believe he was an INTJ at least. But he's the same guy that played at the last episode of Loki, who I do believe that that like he he was kind of like a very I don't I don't actually remember if I typed him as ENFJ or not, but he definitely had that thing where it's like he could see everything and what was gonna happen and he was like playing around in that way. So that's probably why he got them confused because it was the same actor. But yeah, gotcha. still had that same kind of um thing of like seeing what would be possible in the future. Uh but yeah. Emerson. Yeah, I think oh, it's, I think it's dope. No, I don't have nothing else to say. <laughs> Emerson is much smarter than me. Keep going, keep going. <laughs> I somewhat doubt that. Um, planning and long-term goals have interestingly been, and in a difficult way, blessedly been the probably the biggest source of challenge and catalyst for growth in my life. And um, along the way, a major source of difficulty. And I think that it comes down to like two ways that I tend to relate to planning. Um, I have an inherent like perfectionism. Well, I don't want to say inherent. I have a, a perfectionism that may be the result of like conditioning or maybe something about my personality uh, that makes it so I have a very difficult time like leaping forward into a plan until I know exactly what I want and have like a confidence that I've figured out like the most efficient way to get to that thing. Um, and so that tends to lead to like freezing up about long-term plans because it's like you can't know that most of the time and on top of that I have a very difficult time seeing um, well I have had a very difficult time seeing what it is I truly want that's getting better recently for a few reasons I'll explain but like it's been very challenging to differentiate between like expectations placed on me like cultural conditioning like um, things that I enjoy and things that um, I enjoy, but they're not necessarily a part of like my deepest desires. Like all of that feels very much like, like the exact opposite of FI, where I often marvel at FI users where it's like, wow, what's it like to just know or have like an, an intuitive sense of authenticity and like an intuitive connection to what's your core or essence? Because that's often very difficult for me to see. And I've learned that usually I'm already acting it out in the world without really realizing it, but it makes it difficult to choose what uh, paths to pursue because it's like, what do I, you know, I want to act in accordance with who I truly am, but it's hard to see that consciously. Um, the other challenge that I face is that I've, I've described it as if like, imagine you had a superpower for years where you could just create objects out of thin air or you um, were living in the matrix for a long time and you could just like type up a code for whatever building or object that you needed and then suddenly you dropped into a space where you did not have that ability and um, to me that is a big part of my experience of like planning because I can see it all in my head and then I've noticed that um, while I'm very good at the, the in, inner world navigations, both emotionally and mentally, uh, applying that in the outer world, it's like I go to apply it in the outer world and suddenly like I'm tripping over things and I'm like, what? How, I don't know where I'm going. Um, or it'll be like 
this feels weird. Like the whole thing is there and I can like, uh, we were talking about 10 years versus five years. It's like, I can see the whole thing like 10 years from now and then trying to apply it. It's like, wait, I don't know that I know how to build, you know, you know like the, the matrix scene where they create like tons of guns. It's like, I don't know that I know how to build a rifle like piece by piece slowly. I can see like how all the pieces would fit together, but I don't know like how to put that into action all the time. Um, the main things that I've found to help with that, um, I've kind of been drawn to spiritual practices that are focused on like achieving a certain internal result that also results in a certain external result. So like what I mainly use that for is to try to accelerate, um, oh, how do I put this? Like one to motivate me because I'm very motivated by the internal world. And so bringing the internal world to bear on the external by intertwining the two is really motivational and beautiful. It makes me feel like I'm actually connecting with reality because there are many times where I feel like the underlying beauty and wonder of reality is something I can access internally. Um, but then there's not a lot of things that I feel like very strongly connect to that core passion of mine externally. And so I have a hard time figuring out like, you know, what, how to um, sustain motivation when I'm like, I just want to um, bring a certain kind of uh, energy or presence into the world or a certain way of experiencing the world. I've described it as like wanting to be like Elrond from Lord of the Rings, where he's just like chilling in Rivendell where it's, super beautiful and he's just like helping people with healing as they come along and there's this um healing environment and then like this healing that he's giving out uh and so it's been hard for me to figure out what exactly does that look like in the external world so tying those two things together has been really helpful um and then it also has been helpful in figuring out that like what is it i truly want um because having that often difficult to sort through that I've found this alternative approach where it's like doing that work internally where you're accelerating the rate at which you're experiencing the, the thing you're chasing um, or the thing you're pursuing as a goal. And then like having that thing uh, or some version of it experienced more quickly. It's like, Oh, okay. So I got a taste of that. Okay. Do I actually want that? It's kind of like, you know, um, I'm trying to avoid the situation where it's like, oh, I've gotten several years down the line. I'm not actually happy being a dog trainer, right? Where you're like, oh, that isn't what I actually wanted. And so what I found helpful is accelerating the pace at which I start experiencing that thing. And then I strongly evaluate it and be like, is that actually making me happy? The other thing that's led to is a more clear definition of like what it means to be my authentic self in the world. And I think that that has helped guide me a lot because it's changed from like, like I want this specific result or I have to pick a very specific result. Um, and that will like make me feel like I'm being authentic, you know, a very specific activity or goal. Um, and it's changed to like a sort of constant attempt to share the love of the universe or of God or whatever you want to call it uh, with others as it's known internally to me and that involves like self-knowledge and being able to like open yourself to others without hesitation and um being able to sort of radiate the essence or heart of who and what you are and i found that because i started intertwining the spiritual practices with the physical pursuits it's like the spiritual practices would push me more towards that I'd be going after like a regular physical pursuit um, or a physical goal. And either as I achieved it or as I was seeking it, um, the spiritual practice involved in it would like push me more towards, is that really in line with your essence? Um, much faster than it was before. So that's been good. I'm still very much learning. Uh, and, um, but it's been uh, like I, I started out this uh, diatribe with it's like that's been the main source of growth and challenge for me in life which i see as kind of a central point of life to be challenged and receive catalyst for growth so I'm grateful for it okay so with this question i see like I, I, I took it two ways so the first way is of course like on an everyday scale so with that 
I'm pretty like rigid. Like I, I want to have, you know, my to-do list and all that stuff. So, you know, just the regular J stuff. But when we're talking like a, a five to 10 year plan, I really realized that like, honestly, a lot of things don't happen. Like for me, it was real life stuff that hit me. That really made me go, you can't plan five to 10 years. So like, for example, like my mom's death was one me having like a really bad health issue was one and obviously COVID being a thing right so for me it's like everything that you think about in the future it's not promised there's just so many factors that come into play that affect your plan you know your planning your long-term goals so for me i heard this podcast and it really stuck with me he goes like when you're driving right like and if you're driving like in a really dark path your lights are just shining on on the side that says like 40 kilometers ahead like hollywood and as you pass each kilometer it'll tell you you're closer to your destination and that's how I see my like my goal planning for me for example like if I want to be in a career five years from now what am I doing today to take me there make it small you know it doesn't have to be over the top because things are gonna you're gonna take detours so make that goal really small yeah like for example for me like I'm trying to work on like reducing my stomach flubber right right now it's called uh, Joseph, I'm kind of de- like downgrade it to like Joey, like a younger brother. So for me, it's like, okay, you don't have to like think a year ahead. Like, how am I going to do this? So, like, okay, so sorry, a joke is just so corny. But okay, like, for example, when you're working out, like, I don't think about a year's plan. I think about let's do 10 sit ups today so that tomorrow I can do 15. So then tomorrow I can do 20. And you'll gradually see that change. So I don't like to think a year ahead, like, oh yeah, how am I going to plan my meals? Or like, I have to have this really intense Chloe Tang kind of like, you know, workout. I don't need any of that. It's the small stuff that leads me to the bigger picture. And doing that has caused me so much less stress and I'm cool with that. So that's how I'm happy with that. I mean, real life things just, just punch me into reality. I'm like, yeah, I just got to change my routine and I've been happy ever since. Yo, that is facts. That's, I think that goes right along with what me and Jessica were saying with like just following the light. Because yeah, that's that's really how it is. It's like, okay, I see the vision there. And I don't know, like my, my New Year's resolution was pretty much to not have a New Year's resolution. So it's very paradoxical in a way. But it's like, I'm not about to be like, oh yeah, Denzel, you know, you got to go into the gym every single day because you have to do this. Or I'm not going to push myself to do almost anything, but it's more so just knowing what I do want. And then as I'm going through life, whenever I see materials that like, if I'm trying to like build something, if I come through everyday life's materials to help me with, oh, this is the thing that I'm gonna, that I'm trying to build, then I just have to keep an eye out for those things. So the plan is not, oh, I'm gonna run into this, I'm gonna go searching for this, ingredient tomorrow and then i'm gonna go buy this ingredient on tuesday and i'm gonna but it's more of like i know that at the end of the day i want to make a cake and so i know all the ingredients that are necessary or at least most of them and as i'm going through life oh you know what that's actually gonna go really well with my cake whoa i didn't even think that that would have made the cake better but i think i might actually throw that in there too And I'm just always constantly thinking, is this getting me closer to that cake that I want? Um, So that that way it's not so rigid, but it's like, I'm still feeling like every single day I'm getting closer to that thing that I have. And I think that's for me, like that's, that's intuition because it's like, I'm just kind of, I'm following that intuition along life. And no matter what happens, like if COVID happens, if God forbid, you know, there's a death in the family or whatever, that's not going to stop me from finding the ingredients that I'm going to be needing every day because whatever path that I'm walking on, I'm going to find ingredients. I'm going to find um, tools and materials that are going to continue to help me to build that ultimate thing that I want. Um, Question. It also goes back to like kind of like what Cam was saying too. Like I right. really used to like throw, I love the idea of like how um, God just controls everything in my life. And so I'd really be like, even when it came to like dating women, like if a girl maybe would say no to me or something, it's like, okay, God just didn't want me to be with them. It just wasn't meant to be. So I had like a fatalistic type of like, I'm going to work as if it depends on me, but I'm going to pray as if it depends on God kind of thing and just let God handle, you know, whatever it might be. So like if the door closes in my face, I'm like, oh, good. That means it wasn't for me. I was about to probably waste time, you know, 
Um, and I just love the idea, lastly, of uh, I think Elliot Hulse said that successful people don't always make the right decisions, but they make their decisions right. And so it's like, no matter what you chose to do, at the end of the day, that was that was the right thing for you to do. And you have to believe that it, like, it was divinely orchestrated for you to be doing that at that moment. So that, because it's, it's, it's part of the ingredients that you're gonna get at the end of the day. So yeah, I love that, Tina. Question for for Tina and DZ, uh, and myself, vis-a-vis y'all too. Mm-hmm. Do you think what you said at the end there, or at the beginning of what you were saying, is a cop out? Uh, the idea of um, walking through life, uh, believing that the answers are going to come to you in the way that they should, and even if that is true, is that worth? elongating the timeline with which you could be productive, successful, whatever you want to say it. To keep your analogy, right, of of a cake, right, a, a cake, and you're walking through a grocery store and you're thinking, hmm, that could be good. Oh, wow, that could be great. Wouldn't it make more sense to follow a recipe, right? And so it's like, for me, I tend to, to, to think the way you think, but part of me uh, believes that the reason I think that way, or the reason I operate the way that I do, is because it's just easier. It's easier to go through a grocery store and just point at all the things that look interesting, throw them in a bowl, and hope something delicious comes out. But it definitely makes more sense to follow a recipe. Um, so, what do you think? You have an answer. I'll let you go. Okay. <laughs> For me, it's like as long as I have a goal. Again, that light thing, as long as I have a light and I'm moving toward it, it's not a cop out to me. Like at like the moment that I stop moving, that's when now all of a sudden, hmm, uh, it's it's this is a problem. Um if I if I stop moving or if I find a detour, that's not gonna eventually like lead me like closer. Like I think that's one difference in my opinion between like NJs and like NPs. Like even if maybe they might have like a light like the NPs, in my opinion, like they're not, they're taking so many different detours um, and they'll shift whatever that light is. Like they're not really fixated on that light. But for me, it's like, no, I'm gonna build a cake. <laughs> like I'm, I'm making a cake at the end of the day and that's not changing. That's what I'm being rigid about. But the ingredients that are gonna go in the cake, well, that's what I'm not gonna be so rigid about. So if I have that recipe, then I think that I could be, I, it, it might be productive because I'm more focused on like, these are the exact things that are going to go in my cake. But then I think it's also kind of like not opening me up to the things that might have been even better to go into the cake. So it's good to have like at least enough of a recipe to where it's like, okay, no, I, these are the things generally that I want in my cake. But then all of a sudden I'm walking through the grocery store, it's like, yo, I didn't know they made these cinnamon toast crunch things. That actually might be better. I think I might get that. But if I was fixated on just going through this, I wouldn't even probably even like looked at that, you know? Um, so I think that that's kind of like how I see, like at the end of the day, I'm still gonna get my goal accomplished. But the, the things that went into it, uh, that's where there's a difference. So to me, I don't really see it as a cop out because I'm still forever gonna be fixated on the goal and I'm still always gonna be moving toward it. I'm not gonna allow myself to remain stagnant it's so like how Tina was saying, like, oh, you know, what am I doing today? Yeah, I'm not going to have a, oh, yeah, tomorrow kind of thing. No. What am I doing today? Even us doing this video is like, okay, this is going to be closer to this light. This is getting me closer to understanding. Like Everything that I do in life will have a purpose to get me closer to that light. And the moment that I lose that purpose, then that's where it's like, oh, I'm just an aimless person that's flying in the wind. And that, to me, is a little bit too perceiver-like, too loose. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I think it makes a lot of sense. I think uh, for me, and I'm sorry that I keep making it all about myself, but like I think, I think the hard part, the hard part for me in my in my experience is measuring out like which one is worth more in which situation. Like, yes, like I, I yes, I hear what you're saying, DZ, because that's that's probably my um, that's when I'm in neutral. That's kind of how I operate. But also, if I look back at every experience where I've ever been detailed enough to actually plan something out in advance, it's never uh, 
it's never worked out any less than the alternative. If anything, it's worked out better. But I've never enjoyed the process more when I've planned things out detailed in a detailed way rather than when I've been shooting from the hip, right? Like, I, and so it's like, do, do you determine what you do based upon the enjoyment that you get out of it or based upon the timeline that you could shorten? Like, what if I could, what if I could make that five-year plan instead right. of that 10-year plan, right? Like Kenzie mm-hmm. was saying. I, I don't know. And so it, I don't I never know which one to kind of lean into. I know what works uh, and I know what I like. For real quick, Vicky said that she had to go. But thanks for coming out. Vicky. Thank you. Really appreciate I appreciate it. it. Bye, guys. Bye, nice to, nice to see you Bye. guys. I appreciate it. Until next Bye. time. Bye. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Bye. And then so Cam, uh, yeah, like I think for me, what I'd say is like, Maybe for me, it's like, I also have fun. Like the way that you said like, oh, it's not fun for me to like really go, you know, like into the details and like all of that. For me, that is fun. So both of them are pretty fun. I guess it depends on the goal for me. So it's like, if I need to like make it like to put in that work, to put in the details and everything like that, that's not a problem for me. It's just like, do I care enough to do it? Um, and if it's a goal that's like, oh yeah, I really do care enough to do it. Or like, there's more people involved and whatnot. Then it's like, all right, let's go ahead and do it. Because at the end of the day, I'm, I'm pretty proficient at that. Um, yeah. So that's the, so that I guess sense. that's the thing for me. Yeah. That makes sense. Okay. So for me, like, I like how you made the cake analogy. Let me say this cake is cake. So if I plan to make a red velvet cake and I mess it up and I'm like, oh crap. I still want a cake though, because it's sweet. Okay, I'll make a carrot cake at the end of the day. You know, I might not have gotten my initial dream or wish, but at the end of the day though, I got what I was craving, um, sugar. I say this because I was in this predicament. So I graduated uh, HR from HR, the program. I studied human resources and I never ended up in a job um, that I wanted to. I'm actually in uh, fraud in insurance. And I'm like, I studied this for four years why am I in insurance fraud? But you know what? I'm really thankful because I learned things that I never learned from studying HR. So at the end of the day, I'm really grateful for, you know, it doesn't matter what role I'm at. As long as I'm learning the skills to take me to the next level, I'm okay with that. So to me, even if, yeah, the plan didn't go as I wanted to, I'm learning something in between. So I'm cool with everything. I'm gonna, you know, like gratitude to me at the end of the day is what helps carry me because when something when something you know kind of goes off off track, yeah, it's disheartening. But what can we do about it? We gotta find the light, and that and that's how I've always navigated life. Thank you for taking time to watch that video. If you watched it, whether it be on regular speed or two times speed, I appreciate it. And if you don't mind hitting that like button for me, it really helps this humble channel out. Also, if you haven't already subscribed and you like the content that I make, then be sure to subscribe and hit that bell button. That way you'll be able to keep in touch with all the new posts that I make. And then also be sure to check out my playlist where you'll be able to find a lot of my older videos because I think that a lot of those have some great quality content too. But anyway, thanks again for watching. Make sure to leave comments, questions, book me for coaching sessions at DenzelMensa.com and God bless.